You know, uh, being a meteorologist, even if one is not practicing one's meteorology, it's kind of like being a nun. You know, you can leave the convent, <laughs> but you're still a sister to me. Oh. Meteorologist Steve Parr is here. Hey, my friend, how are you this morning? I'm pretty good. I don't normally get compared to nuns, but I guess I'm going to take that as a good omen. How's that? Sister yeah. Mary Steve. God okay. bless you, sister. Here's my first question about this Hurricane Harvey thing. It yep. seems like about two hours ago, it was nothing more than a bad thunderstorm. Suddenly, it's about to turn into a Cat 3 hurricane. Does this happen often and how? It really can happen uh, fairly often. It, it was certainly organized. Just after it came off the... The, the, the Yucatan Peninsula. The Yucatan Peninsula has a habit of kind of ripping storms up a little bit. And so it got out into the Gulf of Mexico. And the thing is that you have to have a couple of things for it to be able to intensify. You have to have uh, a, a really warm water. Well, the Gulf of Mexico is pretty much untouched by any heavy storms anytime recently before Harvey. So that water was really, really warm. Second thing, you, you can't have a whole bunch of, we call it shear in the upper atmosphere. You can't have a lot of strong winds that are blowing the tops off of the thunderstorms. you got to let them build and, and they can grow. And we didn't have really any shear in the Gulf of Mexico, so it was able to, to, to grow and to develop. And then you just got to give it a little bit of time. Well, it's been sitting over that warm water now for, oh, three days. And it still has uh, an, another 12 to 18 hours uh, that it's going to be out over that water. And so it gets to intensify. The other thing is because it's coming in slowly towards the Texas Gulf, just the, just the shape of the, the, the Gulf Coast as it is with the storm coming in slowly, it gives it the ability to intensify because it, it kind of feeds back on the storm and, and squishes that, that eye wall down. If you think of uh, an ice skater, when she's doing the spinning and she's got her arms out, she spins slowly, and then she brings her arms in and she speeds up, the, the shape of the coast of Texas right there can do that exact same type of thing and force a storm to speed up as it spins as it comes in towards the coast. As the projected path is right now, I saw where, like uh, west of west of Galveston, Port Aransas, it's, in that area? What, Corpus, what do you see? What are you looking Corpus. at? Corpus Christi is where it's heading. It's heading straight into Corpus Christi. Um, and I was thinking between Corpus and, and Victoria was kind of the target, and it's it's really looking like Corpus is going to get the full brunt of this. Then what? Nothing. That's the really sad part about this. It's going to make landfall the same spot that Hurricane Beulah did back in the 1960s. And then it's going to have the, um, the attention deficit disorder problems that Allison had back in 2001. Allison meandered through East Texas and flooded Houston in the process because she just kind of wandered up to Nacogdoches then wandered back to the Gulf Coast before eventually taking off. The problem with Harvey is that Harvey's going to come inland, and Harvey's not even going to make it to San Antonio before Harvey's, Harvey's going to get distracted by something and kind of wander around and go, oh, look, uh, sagebrush over here. Let me go knock that down. Oh, look, there's a tree over here. He's just going to kind of wander around in the Corpus Christi area as if he's been drinking. And um, that is a problem because it keeps – it keeps Harvey close enough to the water that you can keep supplying it fuel. Uh, fuel for hurricanes is really warm, moist air. Well, as you hang out by the Gulf of Mexico, right over the, the coast of Texas, that's fuel for a hurricane. And so it stays near its fuel source. There's, there's not a lot of mountains right there. It's a pretty flat area, so the storm's going to get to keep spinning. So it's going to stay strong with the winds, at least tropical storm strength. And it's going to dump a tremendous amount of rain in the exact same spot. And because it never gets inland, that water doesn't have a chance actually to drain back out in the Gulf of Mexico because the, the spinning of the storm itself will be pushing the water from the Gulf of Mexico on shore. So you get storm surge and rain, and it just doesn't stop for several days. Let's talk about rainfall amounts. We've heard as much as two feet in the southeast Texas. Two feet of rain? Yes. Now, the key on that is that we're looking at this two feet of rain over a seven-day period. But today, we're looking at a bunch of rain uh, all at one time right into Corpus. But the Houston area could even be looking at certainly more than a foot, but perhaps as many as, as two feet on, on the southwest side of Houston. And that's a, that's a seven-day projection. So now let's talk Louisiana, uh, specifically the Gulf Coast and New Orleans, where the pumps still aren't working. Any chance it could swing back east toward New Orleans in that direction? And then how does it affect us? All right. After Wednesday, uh, so this, this thing comes on shore tonight into tomorrow morning. 
and then it you know it wobbles around and meanders and and plays sit and spin until about Tuesday, and then Wednesday it looks like it's going to start to make its move. And, and I do still expect this thing to have to come through Louisiana somewhere. Um, but it, but we're now looking at past Wednesday before it starts to make its move. By that time, I'm, I'm hoping that Harvey has stayed inland just a little bit because by that time we're looking then at tropical depression or maybe even just a rim, what we call a remnant low, which means we get some rain coming into Louisiana. If Harvey really gets ambitious and sneaks back out over the water, Harvey could get up by Beaumont as another hurricane again before turning north. I don't think Harvey gets to New Orleans. Uh, I, I think the path is, is, is eventually through northwest Louisiana, but hopefully by that time, not as a hurricane, not as a tropical storm, but as just an area of, of rain. For our shreveport Bossier area, any idea how much rain we could see? Yeah, over, well, the, the next seven days, the projection is somewhere around three inches of rain, four inches of rain, kind of a, a little more than what we've been doing this summer. But we've been, you know, we've been getting pretty steady rainfall just about every other day. Like uh, Wednesday, Thursday, here. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday. What are you looking at? It gets some of these out bands that'll sneak through, but none of that's very much. It looks like it would be later as we get in towards Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday and then Thursday and then Friday of next week before we'd, we'd start seeing some more of this. There's a lot that after Harvey wanders and meanders between now and Wednesday, what does Harvey do then? And really, we don't have a good handle on what Harvey does after wobbling around for a couple of days down in South Texas.